Hello there everybody, good morning. How's it going? This is Jessie from Jessie Marie That Stuff here on Flosstube and I'm here with an update video. Um, this is just a forewarn you guys. This is not the uh, proposed 1516 mashup. I'm trying not to sneeze. I tell you what, it's these videos. You guys, I don't know, maybe I'm allergic to iMovie. Okay, I think the, the almost sneeze has passed. Um, so what have I got to show you today? I have two finishes, two of them, and then I have one project that I have put in the UFO pile, which I'll talk about, one project that I'm considering either adopting out or putting in the UFO pile or holding on to, not really sure yet, and then one whip that I'm working on because this trend of one whip at a time is continuing. Who knows? So, um, yeah, a little bit to talk about. I don't have any haul this time. I have a little bit, but I have a bigger order on the way from Stitching Bits and Bobs. And you guys know what the weight is on Stitching Bits and Bobs. Um, so I figure I'll just lump it all into one and maybe I'll do just a haul video or something that way. Those who don't like the hauls can, can skip it if you like. Um, but one thing that I did want to bring to the table is that um, I, first of all, thank you so much everybody for all of your comments and um, likes and subscriptions and whatnot. I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm not very good at showing that I appreciate it because I haven't responded to comments. And that is something that I am putting on my resolutions for next year. Um, it's something that I want to get better at. Um, but in the meantime, I saw something recently, and it's kind of a trend that's starting to grow within our community, and that is sort of answering questions during a video. I know that Katie's Dash Queen kind of started it with her Q&A, and I kind of want to go on the same vein um, and use that too. So I'm going to um, I'm going to sort of answer your questions here in the video following. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll all make sense here in a moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up my questions here. And I have some notes and they're over here on my screen. So if you see me looking over there, that's why. Um, let's see. So from my last video, Chelsea Glasgow, hey Chelsea. Um, she, answered, she asked me sort of two questions. And the first thing she asked is, where did you get the postcard pattern from? And I'm assuming that the pattern that you're referring to Chelsea is the Clouds Factory. 2016 stitch along. Um, theirs is a postcard in the very same sort of idea as the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It's like all travel related. Um, so I got that from the Clouds Factory website. Uh, what I can do for you is link it in the down bar below if I remember to do so. And um, so that you can get directly to that. And for anybody else who's interested in, in finding that pattern, um, she also talked about my SK Littlest Fairy and how it's black and white, but there's still probably tons of colors despite the fact of being black and white. And um, a few colors to achieve black and white, but only nine. So not a ton, just, just nine colors. Um, and I think I went through a skein of just one of the colors, but the rest were just basically remnants. Um, so not a ton of colors, not so bad. Okay, uh, let's see, Susan, pardon me, Susan, uh, Gibalt, I'm normally really good at names, but when you add an extra vowels, I get a little tripped up. Um, she asked about fabrics for mirabilias. Um, she said that she's really looking at stitching a mirabilia, but that she's not sure if she can handle the higher thread count. And um, so she wanted, she asked me about um, mirabilias stitching over on 25 count or on 22 count. I can't speak to that specifically, but I have seen Mirabilia stitched on Ada. Um, a really great reference for that is Bev uh, Palette PC. She only stitches on Ada, and I think that she did Winter in My Garden, which is a Mirabilia pattern on an, uh, I wanna say an 18 count or a 16 count Ada. So it's totally doable with the larger count fabrics. Um, if you were looking at doing a Mirabilia on 25 count or 22 count, 
22, I bet it would be no problem. 25 count is kind of that, that strange arena because if you stitch it over two, then it's essentially 12 and a half count. And then your stitches are really, really large. Um, which wouldn't be a problem, of course, except for the fact that the beads would look like they're sitting in empty space. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I bet 22 count would be great. And I'm sure, so if you're stitching over one block on 22 count, um, I know that Ada works. And then she had also mentioned that she may consider doing 28 count, which is larger than 32 count. Um, and I have, did I, I think that my, I think that my winter whites, no, that's on 32. I know that they are successful on 28 count and you don't, she also talked about the fact of stitching the skin one over one. You don't have to do that. If anything, um, if you're concerned about the smaller counts, um, and by smaller counts, I mean like tinier holes, more stitches per inch, um, like the 32s, um, you don't, I wouldn't suggest doing the skin one over one. Uh, it's something that I choose to do. It's something that a lot of stitchers choose to do, but it's not, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and so if you are concerned about your eyesight, then I would definitely go with just doing the two over two. Uh, save your vision, save your eyes, stitch longer, you know. It's probably something that I should do myself. But I'm already blind without corrective, so why not? You guys should see my glasses, they are Coke bottles. <laughs> um, but anyway, tangent. Um, Susan, if you are looking at doing Mirabilia on 25 or 22 count, I would, you know, I would post in the, um, one of the Mirabilia Facebook pages, if you're on Facebook. I'm going to link it below and see if there's anybody there that has stitched these designs on those smaller count, bigger number, or smaller number of stitches. It always gets so confusing. So like on 25 or 22. Um, and post on there and see if anybody stitched them on those those count fabrics because they are, um, I don't have any experience with it myself, but I'm sure that somebody does. So, um, so I hope that answered your question. If you have anything else that you want to ask about that, feel free to private message me here on YouTube. I'm more than happy to, to discuss further or try to explain myself. And then uh, Matthew Pershing, hey Matthew. Um, he asked about my Chatelaine, my Frosty Knot Garden. He said that uh, seeing mine inspired him to stitch one of his own, and that's that's so great. Um, he asked if I had finished it, and if so, which video I showed it in, and I haven't finished it yet. Um, but I will speak on that here shortly. Um, it's my whip. Who am I kidding? Um, <laughs> it's my one whip that I'm working on right now, and so there will be an update on that in a little bit. Okay? All right. Um, so those are all of the questions that I received on my last video. Um, as Katie says, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and I will answer them in the next one. As far as other comments, I really hope to sit down here soon and um, work on my responses for that because... You guys take the time to comment, so I should take the time to respond. I'm just going to take a quick sip of coffee here. So you may be wondering, I said good morning. It's approximately 8.20 in the morning, Monday, December the 21st, 2015. And it's looking more and more like this may become sort of a regular recording schedule for me, which is kind of exciting. I don't want to write that in stone just yet, um, so don't quote me on it later if I'm not here next Monday. Sorry. Um, but basically what's going on is my schedule has changed at work, and so I am now working um, 11.45 to 8. So I can get back to recording in the mornings, which is wonderful because I can get back to um, more regular updates. On top of that, I get my morning stitching time back, which I have missed, I'll be honest, I've missed it a little bit. And um, so I get that back. So that means that I can make some more progress, which is just, you know, fantastic for me. Um, 
so yeah that's pretty exciting um so look forward to more regular updates from me i hope that in the new year i can bring back the shout outs uh, because i know sorry itchy nose again i know that i haven't uh i haven't done the shout outs in a while um i had to table that for a little while while i got this recording schedule back on track um so i'm hoping in the new year i can bring that back for us and yeah should we get started on talking about projects okay i'm gonna move the coffee out of the way so i don't dip any projects in the coffee that would be bad um Okay, so I suppose we will talk about my two finishes first. First, this one should come as no surprise. I finished my SK Littlest Fairy, uh, artwork by Selena Fennec, uh, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and it is all done. So, because I stitched it on 18 count Ada, it's huge. Officially the largest bookmark in the history of bookmarks. And it's all sorts of wrinkly. Oh, I better close my notes so I see what, what you're seeing. Okay. There she is, all done. Isn't she pretty, guys? I love, I love it all finished up. So, what can I say? She's done. <laughs> um... This was hard. That was the hardest part for me. I, I tell you what, guys, I kind of enjoy confetti, but those long strips of a single color drive me insane. I don't like it. It's boring, and I make more mistakes because, you know, you think it's a big stretch of color. How hard can it be? And then you make a mistake. Um, let's see. What else can I say? Um, I started this in July of 2014. And I finished it Saturday the 13th of December, I think. I could be making that up. The 12th. The 12th, I think. Something like that. Anyway, I finished it in December. So it took me just over a year, but basically I could have finished it in like three weeks. Because this page was like a half page. I think it started about there. Uh, took me a week that page took me about a week once I finally got going on it I think she's so pretty and the dimension achieved with nine colors oh it looks better stepping back <laughs> you get up close and she gets really pixelated but back she looks gorgeous I really like her I don't think that I will ever use 18 count Ada uh, for a heaven or design ever again um, I know that a lot of people say that they prefer it, but it's just not me. Um, I think it may be it may be partially due to the stiffness of the Ada, and so I bet if I softened it up, I might not have such a hard time with it. But um, nonetheless, I've got it done. Do you know what that means, guys? I finished two Heaven and Earth designs this year. Two Heaven and Earth. I mean, combined. You know, like they're still tiny. Sorry, that's my coffee pot going off. Um, but I finished two Heaven and Earth designs. That's pretty exciting. So, so that's that. So then, when I got that done, I was like, you know what? Let's see what else I can finish before the end of the year. And so I pulled out two projects that I figured I could get done. And I went from black and white to black work. But, ironically enough, there's no black in my black work design. So this, I'm really proud of this, you guys. It makes me so happy. This is my Birdie Bots Box of Delights. And then, in true Harry Potter fashion, its full title is Birdie Bots Box of Delights, Harry Potter in black work, told in black work. Isn't it cool? Okay, so what I think I'll do here is I'm going to record a separate video and insert it here so that I can walk you through each of the delights there. But there it is, all done. Um, just because my lighting in here isn't great today, 
and the quality of my video isn't great. So I think I will do that. So those are my two finishes from the last couple of weeks and really excited about that. That brings my total finishes up to nine for the year. And considering I wasn't sure if I was gonna pass six, I'm kind of excited about it. It's more finishes than I got last year. Last year I only got six total. So I'm, I'm pretty excited that I got nine this year. Um, in my 15-16 mashup, I will go through more in detail on um, on my nine finishes, but two of which are heaven and earth designs. I love it. Okay, so then once I finished Box of Delights, I pulled out another project that I thought for sure I could get done. And this is the project that has now found itself in the UFO pile. So this is my Joan Elliott um, bathroom humor piece. And this is as far as I got on it before I put it in the UFO pile. So this is a project that I will likely never go back to. And the reason is that, first of all, I got quite a ways. I was really close to finishing. But what I found in like the way that I'm stitching now is that I really only want to stitch on things that I really, truly enjoy. And I started this for a sal. And it wasn't even, it was just for the sake of a sal. Like it wasn't something that I was really, really interested in. I mean, don't get me wrong. The piece does have some sentimental value for me, but it, it was like just for the sal. I pulled a piece of fabric out of my stash that I wasn't even really sure how I felt about it. And as it turns out, I hate the fabric. Like I really, really hate it. It's um, an MCG Textiles linen. And it's so weird. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know exactly how to explain it, but it's weak and it it's not very solid, like it's really fluid. And it pulls apart so easily. Like to the point where I'd be afraid to stretch it to frame it. Because you see here, you see how the fabric has kind of started to separate there? That's from being in my frame. Like that's from stretching it on my stretcher bars to be in my frame. And I mean, like, you know, I tighten it up pretty good, but that's, that's insane and it's even worse on this side. Can you see that there? And there. So, you know, the fabric is, is pretty weak. It's an MCG, I think I said, an MCG Textiles linen. But it's, I don't know, it's just not fun to work on. My stitches don't look right. Like, they look like they're kind of wonky. And I want, I mean, it's really important to me to work on things that I really enjoy. Because if I just work on things for sales, just for the sake of it, like, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like that's counterintuitive to what cross-stitching means to me. I want to work on things that I enjoy start to finish. I want to work on things that I'm sad are over because I will miss them. You know, like that's, that's how I feel about 95% of my projects. But this one, I just didn't feel that. And yeah, I could have bit through it and gotten it done, but then like, I don't know. It's just not exciting to me. So while the piece itself has sentimental value, the fabric does not. And so I, I just, I can't bring myself to finish it. I just can't do it. So this will go in the UFO pile. And I'm okay with that, you know? Like, I'm, I'm oddly comfortable with it. Because it just, it has to be more. It has to be more. Gosh, I don't like my stitches on this fabric. I really don't. <laughs> I don't like them. They're, they're just, they're wonky. So 
So that's that. A part of me is kind of sad because, you know, I, I did put some time into this. And I put some thread into this, so it means I put some money into it. But I'd be more sad if I was dredging along trying to finish it just for the sake of it. You know, just, I'm not comfortable with that, so I'm okay with that, with that going off to no nowhere land. So then that brings me to my next project. Now when I decided to UFO that, I was looking at my at my whips. And I think I have 20. Let me pull it up now. I think I have 26 works in progress now. Um, maybe 24. I don't know. I'll look it up here. Um, and so what I did is I ordered them based on when I started them. Sorry, I'm just looking at all of... Okay, yes, I have 24 projects. Oh, trying to minimize. There we go. Okay, uh, so I have 24 projects, and I ordered them based on when I started them. And I have one project from 2013 that's unfinished. And that is my Quick Stitch Autumn Owl artwork by Anya Kai from Heaven and Earth Designs. And I was kind of excited to get back into this. Um... Because I got some of a Heaven and Earth design fix with SK Littlest Fairy, but I'm stitching Pumpkin, which is her nickname. I'm stitching Pumpkin in my preferred method of stitching Heaven and Earth designs. Whereas SK Littlest Fairy, I had to change everything because it was two over one on Ada. It was just, it was a different experience. Um, so anyway, so I pulled this one out. It's my oldest project and I thought, okay, Here's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down and try to get some of these old projects done. So I pulled it out and I had page two finished. And so I gridded page three. You can see my gridding there. And I started stitching. And I didn't enjoy it. I was not enjoying it at all. I mean, I think I did... I probably did 50 stitches, and I'm just, I'm like, about it. And I don't want to be about my cross-stitch projects. Like, that's totally counterintuitive. And so I'm sitting back, and I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to figure out why. Why do I feel like that about this? Because it's cute, it's whimsy, Starbucks, it's my colors, you know, it's autumn. It's the fabric that I can't stand. I can't stand it. This is a 28 count even weave that I got from Michaels. So it's probably an MCG textiles even weave. And I don't like it. I really do prefer 25 count Lugana for my Heaven and Earth designs. That's what Mini Pearl is on. That's what uh, Mini Pirate's on. That's what In This Moment is on. This is on something different. Because when I first started having an earth design since I was looking at the bigger ones. Okay, this is when I wasn't willing to spend a whole lot of money on cross stitch projects. And now I'm looking at projects that are like $300. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so I was looking at ways to save money to do these heaven and earth designs. And if I was using 25 count for say a Josephine Wall project, I would need a large piece of fabric. So I thought, okay, well, let's let's think of ways I could shrink this down. If I use a higher thread count fabric, that makes the image smaller. So that's why I tried the 28 count for this. And I thought, it's a quick stitch, so it'll be quick. <laughs> and um, that way I can get used to doing the 28 count. And I don't like it. I mean, I just, I don't like it. My stitches, you I don't know if you guys can see that, but they're not they're not perfectly even. And even my tension between when I stitched this and this little bit over here has changed. If only slightly. That's probably manageable. But I'm just not enjoying it. Like, it felt like work trying to get the, the needle through this fabric. And I just wasn't looking forward to stitching. 
I remember this was back when I was still on working in the mornings and I had to force myself to sit down and stitch. Me. <laughs> I had to force myself to sit down and stitch. I just, that boggles the mind. And so I'm trying to figure out what to do with this. A part of me thinks that eventually I'll get over myself and I'll just do it. I'll just do it. A part of me thinks I won't. Part of me thinks that this mentality is permanent and that I'm never going to grow to love this because of the fabric. A part of me thinks somebody else would. So I posted on Instagram about what do you do for a project that you're not in love with anymore? And one of the options that I received was um, uh, DeBoss Lady Watkins started a Facebook group, Adopt a Whip. Fantastic. To where I could adopt this project out to somebody who would love it. <sighs> the problem with that is that I don't know. So, okay, so when I started this project, again, I was doing it on the cheap. My organization has grown up, so to speak, since, um, since I've started stitching. And when I organized this one, it's, it's just kind of an, a mess. It's not really very well organized. It's not something that I would necessarily want to hand to somebody else. So I could go into the process of fixing that and making it pretty to give to somebody else. But then I'm putting more money into it. I love you guys. But, you know, that's time away. It's, it sounds awful. But it's time away from what I love, you know? Like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. So, what I think may happen is I think that QS Automata may go the way of bathroom humor. And I think it may go into my UFO pile. I have a drawer with projects that I'm not going to finish. And maybe in my 15, 16 wrap up, I'll show you that drawer. Um, we'll see. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just not interested. So I think that that's probably what's going to happen with this. Um, trying to think about what to do with the pattern because it's a valuable pattern, you know? I mean, like, spend some money on it. But it's not like I can give it to anybody, so never mind. Never mind. Excuse that thought. Okay. Um, heads up. Can you hear the dog? He's snoring. <laughs> so cute. He's probably not going to make an appearance because he looked at me like this this morning. Like, leave me alone. I'm tired. Which makes sense. It's gray. He's just not a fan of gray days. Anyway. Tangent. I need another sip of coffee. Okay. So, finishes, two UFOs, one work in progress. The project that I'm working on now, till I get bored, or the first of the year, whichever comes first, um, is my Chatelaine Frosty Knot Garden. And I'm going to put a picture in here of where it was the last time you saw it. And then now I'm going to put in a picture of, okay, so working on this, I got all four of the corners done. Here. No, not yet. Okay. So I got all four of the corners done. And so I'm going to put a picture here of the last corner when I finished it yesterday. And then a picture of the whole piece, um, including those four corners done. So that um, you have a point of reference for this next part that I'm going to talk about. Okay. So then, here's my progress as of today. So that's why I did the pictures. Oh, let's try over here. There we go. Okay, so that's why I did the pictures. 
because I am not scrolling all the way down to the bottom there. Um, so you can see that I'm working in this in this corner over here and this part is done and this leaf is done and then I'm working down this one and there will be another leaf here and another leaf here and the whole thing will repeat all the way around. So that's what I'm working on now and I'll be honest guys I can already start to feel myself like okay maybe it's time to switch projects. <laughs> the reason for that is that this whole project has been a lot of silks, a lot of um, specialty stitches, a lot of petite treasure braid. Um, it's been a lot of different things. And these blue mountains here, I'm assuming they're mountains, are DMC. <laughs> like it's just it's just straight cross with DMC. Even the leaves, with the exception of the frosty white outer border, are DMC. Now there's a little bit of petite treasure braid um, along the top of the mountains here and then um, sort of bordering in the leaf. But by and large, it's DMC. So it's kind of boring. You know, it's nothing too exciting. Um, the interesting part is that I've had to rechart the leaf myself. <laughs> the reason I had to rechart it is that Part five only, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. Okay, so part five only shows a portion of the leaf. And then the bottom of the leaf is in two of the previous parts. So it's like you have to flip back between the different parts to get the full leaf. So I just recharted the whole thing. Um, and then the other thing was uh, the back stitching. Okay, so you see the the almost black, deep dark green back stitching in the leaf, like the branches and whatnot. Okay, so I stitched this using the PDF because I like to be able to zoom in on specialty stitches and just stitches in general. Because the, there's no like there's there's no separate page showing the stitches and then the back stitch, so you do kind of have to zoom in to be able to see all of the intricate details. Um, the back stitch for that is in the color for the back stitch shows a deep dark gray. The rest of this design, the color of the back stitch correlates to the color of the thread that you're using. But deep dark gray is used for two different colors of DMC. So I kind of had to pick one, which is kind of weird. Um, but so I just recharted it so that I do all four of the leaves the same. So that's that. I think that what I'm going to do is I think that I am going to finish this mountain over here. And then put this down. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. But I love this piece. Oh my god, is it beautiful. It's so gorgeous. It makes me so happy. Most exciting was that... Okay. You see in the corner, you see there's the flower there, the two there, and then that one there. Those things are a pain. Oh my goodness. Because it's five or six stitches of three different colors, four different colors. Uh, there is back stitch for the stems, and then there is ever so wonderful intricate back stitch with petite treasure braid. Now don't get me wrong, petite treasure braid is miles better than Krennic or, you know, and leagues better than DMC Metallic. Don't get me wrong. But intricate backstitch with any metallic is not fun. I'm trying to zoom in so that you can see that flower. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> um, 
And there are 16 of them total on part four. There were four of them on part three. And then there's another 12 on part six. So I'm about halfway, no, I'm halfway done with those flowers. I'll be ready to be done with those. Um, Cause it's just not, it's just not fun. Um, And I can't even really explain why. I think it's because the back stitching is, there's just so much of it. I think that's what it is. I don't mind back stitching, but I don't really know why. I don't know. I think at that point, when I reached that point on each of those corners, I was ready for the block to be done. Um, because the, the most fun thing about shadow lanes is that as you radiate out from the center, things change. You know, like the whole dynamic of stitching changes. It's like an evolving project. Like it gets more complex, but more spread out. I don't know. I love shadow lines. Love, love, love shadow lines. So anyway, tangent. Um, so that's pretty much it. As far as my whips are concerned. Now I know that I've talked about the 1516 mashup. I think that that I'm going to record at some point this week because Danny's winter vacation starts Wednesday. So I think I'll probably try to record that tomorrow. Um, he gets two weeks off. A lucky duck. And um, so I think that I'll try to record that tomorrow uh, if I can get my myself in gear. So yeah. So thank you all once again so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing and for all of your comments and likes, even your dislikes. If you insist on it, that's fine. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Take care.